Obadiah 21, performing the office of judging and ruling, just as they had in the days of Judges, Judges chapter 2, verse 16 and 18, Zion, that is, Jerusalem, would be their center, and the kingdom would belong to the Lord. Obadiah chapter 20, uh, Obadiah, Obadiah verse 21. Who has Obadiah? You have Obadiah open. Would you read verse 21? Those who have been rescued will go up to Mount Zion in Jerusalem to rule over the mountains of Eden, and the Lord Himself will be there. Those who have escaped. Insert, that is a definition of the remnant, like a carpet, rem, a, a, a remnant of a carpet. There is a small part of the carpet, the small part of the world of, of Jews that are going to be saved. And they will do what? They will, uh, have been rescued, will go up to the mountain and go on. Yeah, and that is what is going to the mountain. Yes. And as a fulfillment of this prophecy, Obadiah combines in one picture what history splits in two different times. Prophecy normally has more than one fulfillment. In the first fulfillment, we talked about John Maccabees and the zealous suppression to the Roman ruler later brought about the demise of the Edomites. They got destroyed then, but that was only a token. It's only a token pledge that God is going to come against all hostile kindred nations that are against Him. Hence, the day of the Lord ran throughout the history of the kingdom of God. So throughout history, Every nation that has been against God has received the judgment of God. God allows a nation to do their evil work and they think they're getting away with it when in fact God is keeping a record and God is going throughout history has destroyed nations in token, one day they will all be destroyed. So that it occurs in each particular judgment as evidence of its complete fulfillment which was near and approaching and it still is. Profound book of Obadiah. Obadiah is simply saying to Edom, your day of judgment is coming. Your son East, and we come to Romans, and we say in Romans it's chapter nine, Esau have I hated, and Jacob have I loved. Esau established the Edom nations, and all those nations, though they have prospered and mocked and went against Israel, their day of judgment is. Now, I do like the book of Joel. It comes next in this line of thought. Joel is located between Hosea and Amos in the Hebrew canon of the Minor Prophets. Judah's foes are the neighboring nations and not the later empires of Assyria, Babylon, and Persia. Over half of the 73 verses of Joel in the book are quoted elsewhere in the prophets. Here is what is interesting before we close in the, in the day is in the book of Joah, where is it at? In the book of Joah, where are we at? Joah's right here. Yeah. Between Hosea and Amos, Joah has 78 verses. What's interesting is, our sentence was, did I say 78 verses? 
Uh, let me see, what did I say? Over half of the 73 verses in the book are quoted by the other prophets. Now, what's interesting is it ties in all of the books together. Your assignment is to find out how many other prophets quoted Joel. And now, there, there, there was one New Testament, Dorothy, there was one New Testament disciple that quoted scripture from Joel. Would you have any idea who that is? I'd say John, but I don't know. Ah, oh, it's wrong, sorry. He may have seen it. There was one disciple in the New Testament that quoted Joel. 